What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Haps audiobook. Today we are going to be reading through the actual titular story of this book called Haps. This is actually my least favourite of the three, but it's still a pretty okay story. So, I mean, I haven't actually, like, read it properly yet. I've only read the leaks, of course. So, I don't really know if uh, if that just changes everything uh, by just reading the leak. Like, I don't know if I'm going to read this and I'm going to love it uh, after reading it. But, you know, we'll see. Let, let's, let's just get straight into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, yeah. So, let's get straight into it. Aiden flung open the door in front of him and stomped out into the chaos that was the main concourse through the Freddy Fazbear's mega pizzaplex. The door hit the wall with a bang loud enough to get the attention of a group of giggling girls passing by the exit area of the Laser Tag Arena. Laser Tag Arena? Sorry, I'm, I'm going to be pointing out a few things while reading, but yeah. Aiden recognised the girls immediately. They were seniors at his school. The door rebounded and hit Aiden from behind. The girls laughed at him. One of the girls, a cute red-haired Nora, raised her brows and pointed when she saw Aiden's swollen left eye. Nice Shana, Aiden. She put emphasis on the second syllable in his name and changed the E to an O, pronouncing his name Aidon. <laughs> Instead of the way it was supposed to be pronounced, with a more with more inflection on the A and an E sound instead of an O in the second syllable. This mangling of Aiden's name was pretty universal at his school. It had started when Aiden, new to the school, had a wild idea and tried out for a talent competition. Unnaturally tall and skinny for his 15 years, Aiden was burdened with wild bushy hair, a beaky nose, no chin, and lopsided eyes. He knew he was nothing to look at, so he tried to make up for it with unusual abilities and knowledge. Aiden was an accomplished juggler. He had mad skills with a hula hoop and a jump rope, and could do things with a yo-yo that no one else had thought of. He'd convinced himself it would be a good way to meet people and fit in if he put together a routine, showcasing these gifts and presented them in his new school's talent show. His plan, unfortunately, had backfired. In front of the dozens of kids hanging out to watch the auditions, Aiden was called onto the stage by clueless Mrs. Marchant, the head of the theatre department. Aidon, she had warbled when he'd come on stage with his uh, jump rope, hula hoop, juggling pins, and yo-yo. Everyone probably would have forgotten the incident if he hadn't completely bungled his routine. Aiden had an arsenal of tricks, but they all failed him that day. Self-conscious, he had ended up getting so entangled with his rope and his yo-yo that he'd fallen down and then managed to trip off the stage. Story of his life. Ignore them, Aiden's one and only friend Jace said now. The black eye makes you look tough. Aiden snorted. He kicked at one of the neon squares on the floor of the walkway through the pizzaplex. Yeah, right. Wait till Landon tells everyone how I got it, jackass. Laser tag is supposed to be about shooting the laser guns, not hand-to-hand -hand combat. He threw that elbow on purpose. Jace sighed and pulled Aiden, oblivious of his surroundings, out of the path of a group of kids chasing one another through the pizzaplex. Yeah, he probably did. Newsflash, he's a jerk. Aiden, steaming, stalked away from the laser tag arena. Bumping into people left and right, he barely heard or saw anything around him. He was vaguely aware that Jace was trotting after him, but the bright lights and cheerful sounds of the pizzaplex were being muted by the buzz of Aiden's rage. He was so tired of being treated like crap, like he was a ball trapped inside a pinball machine being slapped this way and that way by his classmates and his parents. He was tired of being a pawn. He wanted some control. Aiden. Jace tugged at Aiden's shirt sleeve. When Aiden ignored him, he tugged harder. Aiden! Aiden stopped and whirled on his friend. What? Jace's face tightened, and he hunched his shoulders. Already small for a ninth grader, Jace could practically curl into a ball when he felt rejected or criticised. Unlike Aiden, Jace wasn't bad-looking. He had a normal face and perfectly normal black hair, but he was too cute, as in little kid cute. He was too small and too fragile, and he had an unfortunate little boy voice to go with his looks. This shoved him out into the same no man's land of unpopularity that Aiden had lived in ever since he was five years old. The day before his first day in kindergarten, Aiden had overheard his mum telling a friend 
that she wished his sweet personality would overcome his unfortunate homeliness. Her hopes had been, well, hopeless. Aidan immediately felt bad when he looked at Jace's crushed expression. Jace was the only person who treated Aidan like he mattered. Sorry, Jace. I'm just pissed as all. Jace nodded. I get it. I'm sorry Landon elbowed you. I should have found a way to have your back, but he kind of outweighs me. Plus, besides the laser gun, all I have is this. Jace pulled out the Swiss army knife his mum had given him for his birthday. He was ridiculously happy with the gift, as if the tiny knife and its itsy bitsy scissors and corkscrew and file and screwdriver could transform little Jace into an invincible warrior. Aiden punched Jace's shoulder lightly. Well, next time, pull that thing out and run him through. Jace laughed. He pretended to wield the knife like a sword. A little girl in braided pigtails bounced off Aiden's legs, and he felt something wet and sticky on his skin. He looked down just in time to see the little girl's huge smiley face sucker finish swiping his forearm. Ew! Aiden yanked his arm back and glared at the little girl. She didn't even notice him. Uh, Jace plucked at Aiden's sleeve again. This time, Aiden didn't snap. He let Jace pull him out of the flow of the crowd, back against the bright striped wall next to the, Leon, the, eh, the neon lit entrance to the bumper car arena. Aiden glowered at Freddy's themed cars. Normally, he liked bumper cars. They were a great way to let off steam. Today, though, somehow, the shiny little shoe-shaped pods painted to look like Freddy's animatronic characters were just too perky. What do you want to do now? Jace asked. Aiden pulled his gaze from the chaos of the zigzagging, careening bumper cars. Listening to the cars buzzing and the kids whooping, he shrugged. So far today, he and Jace had played their favourite arcade games, spent some time in the VR booths, ridden the roller coaster, and stuffed themselves with pizza. None of that had done it for Aiden. He just wasn't in the mood to have fun today. He'd been ready to give up and go home and watch TV when Jace had suggested laser tag. Aiden had agreed when he'd seen Landon and his friends go into the arena. Aiden hated Landon, and the idea of shooting the smug jerk with a laser gun had sounded like a good idea. Aiden gingerly touched his uh, still swelling eye. He grimaced. So much for that good idea. Why don't we go tubing? Jace asked. Remember how much fun it was last time when we were scared? Well, sorry, when we scared those little kids? Despite his mood, Aiden smiled. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Tubing was Jason Aiden's word for clambering through Freddy's fortress, a massive maze of climbing and sliding plastic pipes that entwined with Fast Freddy, the Pizzaplex's super fast roller coaster, embraced the entire circumference of the center. They'd only recently checked out the maze because it was advertised more toward the younger kids than toward teens. They'd originally gone poking around the maze because they'd been avoiding some bullies who had been hassling them in the arcade. At least you shouldn't get hurt in the tubes, Jay said, panting. Haps won't let that happen. He laughed his patented girlish twitter. Aiden grinned. Good old Haps. Haps, Aiden and Jace had discovered... Uh, oh, sorry, I read that completely wrong. Haps, Aiden and Jace had discovered when they first explored the maze, was a maintenance and safety bot designed to prevent injuries in the maze. Haps stood for Helpful Automated Pipe Protection Server. It was a robot that roamed the tubes or pipes, checking to be sure everything was in good order and helping out kids who had fallen or were lost. Aiden and Jace got a big kick out of Haps. They thought their robot's huge lit up smile and large foam hands were hilarious. When, they'd when they first encountered him, they'd wanted to adopt him, which is weird. Wouldn't it be great if we had a Haps to clear the way for us at school? Jace had asked as, had as they left the maze after the first time they'd explored it. Aiden had warmed to the idea. Yeah, Haps could just toss aside all the jerks. Jace laughed. And do our homework for us. And clean our rooms. He could do all our chores. Aiden chuckled. That would be cool. And lock my dad out of the house when he gets in his bad moods, Jace said. This last thought had sobered them. Aiden's parents didn't approve of him. They tended to ignore him. But Jace's dad was mean. There was nothing funny about that. Now Aiden slung a, an arm around his friend's shoulders. Yeah, let's go tubing. Jace grinned, 
and the two boys stepped into the flow of the crowd rushing from one part of the pizzaplex to the other. As soon as they did, Aiden felt the pulsing heat in his temples begin to abate. He mentally shook off the image of Landon's perpetual I'm better than you smirk. The entrance to Freddy's fortress was on the opposite side of the pizzaplex from the bumper cars. It would take several minutes to get there at Jace's pace. His small legs couldn't stride as fast as Aiden's could. When Aiden and Jace had come to the pizzaplex the first time, the place had been overwhelming. It was huge. Fortunately though, its layout was pretty simple. The pizzaplex was shaped like a pizza, under a massive neon lit dome topped by a, black, by a back lit pizza themed stained glass cupola. God, that was so hard to say. Because of this round configuration, Jace had told Aiden he thought the pizzaplex was sort of a giant clock of fun. Because Freddy's Pizzeria was the inspiration for everything in the pizzaplex, Jace suggested that the big dining area where the pizza was served was noon on the clock. Every other main part of the pizzaplex was another hour on the clock face. Laser tag was at 4 o'clock, the entrance to Freddy's Fortress was between the Carnival Games area in the 2 o'clock position, and the arcade was in the 3 o'clock position. Unfortunately, when Aiden had charged out to the laser tag arena, he'd headed left instead of right. So, they'd ended up in front of the bumper cars, which was at 7 o'clock on Jace's imaginary pizzaplex clock face. It didn't take long to hurry past the roleplay area, something Aiden and Jace hadn't tried yet, and the employees only section of the pizzaplex, the behind the scenes janitorial, storage, maintenance, kitchen and security areas. After that, they strode past the shopping area and then on the packed dining area and its enticing aroma of pepperoni and onions. Even though Aiden and Jace had filled up on pizza already, the food still smelled good. As they moved through the crowd, go-karts shot past on the track that ran parallel to the walkways and sometimes dipped under pedestrian bridges. The Doppler hum of the cart's electric motors was like a bass line to the crowd noise. Just beyond the dining room, the carousel spun in kaleidoscopic colour and tinkling music sound as they passed it. And just after that, the carnival games area bulged in chaotic crowds of laughing people shouting encouragement as they tried to win plush Freddy's character prizes. Finally, Aiden and Jace made it to the entrance to Freddy's fortress. They got in the line behind two dark-haired girls uh, who were dancing happily to the music blasting through the Pizzaplex's sound system. With a neon arch, like all the other Pizzaplex venue openings, the entrance to Freddy's fortress was long, narrow and disorienting. Painted in a black and white pinwheel illusion pattern, the entrance made you feel like you were stepping into infinity. You felt like you were leaving the real world behind being lured into a topsy-turvy realm that would trap you forever. Aiden and Jace thought it was super cool. Maybe we should paint the inside of our fort like this when we build it in the summer, Jace said now. Aiden thought about it. Think we could pull it off? I don't know how to paint illusions. I don't either, Jace said. But we could figure it out, right? We're our own universe, aren't we? We can make whatever we want. Aiden grinned at his friend. He gave Jace a high five. Jace returned it. Jace and Aiden had been friends for only a few months, since Aiden's dad had been transferred to the town and Aiden had started at the new school in the middle of the term. Aiden hated starting schools in mid-term. Why couldn't his dad stick with one job in one town? Even though Aiden hadn't known Jace long, he was closer to Jace than he'd ever gotten to his friends in previous towns. Aiden was a one friend at a time guy. Not by choice, it just seemed to work out that way. I know people online have been, uh, have been uh, shipping these guys. As like gay icons, which is pretty cool. I I can see it. I see it. Uh, it, it ne the story never calls out like they were gay, <laughs> but uh, you can definitely see it. Let me just have a drink so, quick. Okay, Jace had been the only kid who hadn't decided that Aiden's jump roping, hula hooping, juggling, yo yoing fiasco left him unqualified for friendship. Jace had come to sit with Aiden at lunch the day Aiden had so spectacularly made a fool of himself. Come to laugh at the new class clown? Aiden asked Jace when he'd sat down and opened his brown bag. Nope, came to meet the bravest guy in the school, Jace said, pulling out an array of plastic containers that Aiden would later find out contained a sun-dried tomato and crab salad sandwich on sourdough bread, wild greens and raspberry vinaigrette, and a kiwi fruit tart. That sounds so amazing. Uh, Jace had sophisticated food tastes. 
The only food he and Aiden agreed on was pizza, and Jace always wanted his with weird toppings like artichoke hearts and goat cheese and caramelised onions. They always got a half and half pizza. Aiden was a plain pepperoni guy. After Jace had pulled out his fancy lunch, he'd grinned and offered a hand. It took guts to do what you did. Aiden had stared at Jace's elfish face. You're not messing with me, are you? Jace shook his head. I don't know how to mess with people, I'm just... Well, me, I guess. Not that too many people appreciate that, but it is what it is. I'm my own universe. Aiden laughed. He liked that. Well, do you have room in that universe for a plus one? He asked. Jace had nodded. The two had shaken hands, and that was that. They'd been friends ever since. It hadn't mattered after that bonding moment that Aiden and Jace didn't have a lot in common. Jace didn't care that Aiden dressed like a slob, in baggy jeans and faded t-shirts and dirty scuffed boots, and Aiden didn't care that Jace dressed like a little adult, in pressed khaki slacks and button-down shirts and old-fashioned sneakers. It didn't matter that Jace was more interested in art and music than academics, and that Aiden loved learning things and got straight A's, something that contributed to his classmates' disdain, what was wrong with being smart? It wasn't a problem that Jace was obsessed with reading novels and, and collecting old clocks, and that Aiden was obsessed with his ropes and pins and hoops and yo-yos. They always found plenty to talk about because Aiden liked to hear about what Jace was doing and Jace liked to hear about what Aiden was doing. They did have some common ground, they both liked to watch old movies and shows on TV, and they both liked to play games, and they both loved Freddy's. They'd been thrilled when Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex had opened up, Fortunately, only a few kids were lined up to get into Freddy's fortress. Aiden and Jace waited just a couple minutes before they were crawling into the first shiny red tube that led into the heart of the maze. Although the tubes that made up the climbing maze might have been designed for the smaller kids, they were large enough for adults to crawl through. About four feet in diameter, the rounded tunnels had plenty of space for even Aiden's tall, gangly frame. Aiden and Jace crawled quickly, when they, ate, when they entered the maze, and it didn't take much time for them to reach the end of the first tube, which was only about 20 feet long. At the end of that twint, tw uh, sorry, at the end of that 20 feet, the maze branched out in several directions. Some of the offshoots had ladders attached to the tubing. Aiden thought of these as ladder pipes. They angled up from one level to another like stairs. Some of the tunnels had even sharper angles of ascent. These were studded with big hand and footholds, like the kind on climbing walls, Aiden thought of the D's as climbing pipes. Some tubes climbed more gradually than either the ladder pipes or the climbing pipes, so neither ladder rungs nor hand and footholds were needed. That didn't make any sense to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of the tubes were level, leaning off into far off areas of the maze before heading upward. And some of the tubes were slides. Aiden and Jace liked those the best. Listening to Jace puff along behind him, Aiden pointed to one of the level tunnels. Let's go this way, he said. He wanted to get deep into the labyrinth of the fortress, as far away from life as possible. I'm right behind you, Jace said unnecessarily. Aiden led the way into what was now a bright orange tunnel. Although the tunnels were formed of transparent plastic that allowed you to see through them, the plastic was tinted in a variety of bright colours, some solid coloured and some multicoloured, in mind-blowing patterns like stripes or polka dots or illusions similar to the pinwheel shapes of the entrance. A few tunnels were just plain clear plastic. Some were so black they were nearly opaque. At first, Aidan and Jace had hypothesised that the colours and patterns were designations to help navigate the maze, but after exploring the fortress for hours, they hadn't discerned any logical order to the colours. The various shades seemed to be as random as the twists and turns, rises and drops in the fortress. In addition to the many hued passageways in the maze, the fortress contained intriguing, ever-shifting mirrored partitions. These partitions seemed to show up suddenly and randomly. A tunnel could be wide open one minute, and a couple of minutes later, it was blocked off with one of the mirrors. These mirrors fascinated Aidan and Jace. The first time they'd encountered one blocking a section that had been open when they passed it just moments before, they'd started trying to figure out the timing and location of the mirrors. They assumed the mirrors showed up to further confuse the already bewildering layout of the maze. They definitely had that effect. One afternoon the previous week, it had taken Aiden and Jace over an hour to find their way around one such suddenly appearing mirror so they could make their way back out of the maze. Now Aiden led Jace past one of the mirrors. He paused at a junction of another tunnel, 
leading to the left and a climbing pipe heading up and to the right. Which way? he asked Jace. Your turn to choose. Jace wiggled up next to Aiden and assessed his options. He looked to both sides and straight ahead. Because the pipes in the fortress were transparent, they could see into other pipes around them. To their left, a couple of girls were crawling around a bend leading away from where Aiden and Jace crouched. To the right, a couple tubes over, a tussle headed toddler was being uh, towed along by a clearly exasperated older girl. She was probably the little kid's sister. Jace pointed at the ladder tube. Let's go up. Maybe we'll find one of those long twisty slides. I like those. Aiden grinned. He liked the twisty slides too. They started at the top of the three-story high fortress, and they ended up on the venue level of the pizzaplex. Because they wound around in a tight spiral, the ride down was long and fun. Unfortunately though, to get to the top of a slide, you had to figure out the way to the climbing to the correct climbing pipes to get to the top of the fortress. Aiden and Jace had only found the top of the curlicue slides. I don't know how to say that word, I'm sorry. Three times. Maybe they'd get lucky today. You lead, Aiden told Jace. Jace nodded and reached for the closest bright purple handhold on the blue and pink swell patterned climbing pipe walls. Aiden waited for Jace to work his way up the tube a few feet before Aiden started following his friend. He took a deep breath, inhaling the familiar smell of the maze. The pipes in the fortress had a sort of chemical odour. Aiden figured it was the plastic. In addition to that sharp smell, the pipe sometimes smelled like sweat or dirty socks. Layered over the smell was the scent of the disinfectant spray that Haps applied liberally as he made his way through the maze. Skirting around a wad of chewing gum, Aiden thought about Haps. He and Jace had discussed the robot a lot. They had concluded Haps was a programming marvel. Not only was Haps designed to get kids out of trouble in the maze, he was also a janitorial and maintenance bot. His technology apparently was cutting edge. Aiden had read up on it after they had encountered him in their first time in the maze. According to the articles, Aiden had found um, Freddy's Fortress had been the subject of heated debate when it was first proposed. Smaller versions of the climbing and sliding tubes had been tried in other famous kid-focused pizza places and they'd been a big disaster. The problem wasn't just safety. Yes, little kids sometimes got stuck or hurt themselves when they fell. Once, Aiden read, a fire and rescue team had to be called in to ex ex extricate... God, that's, that's a really weird word. To extricate a teen who'd been a little too big to round a corner in one of the pipes. Stuck kids, however, weren't the real issue with climbing pipes. The real drawback to the installations was sanitation. When they were first built in the other pizza places, employees were sent into the pipes several times a day to try to keep them clean. This job, however, was too big and too unpleasant for a minimum wage employee to do well. Hygiene became a big concern. Many parents refused to let their kids go into the tubes, something that led to frequent noisy public trans tantrums. Some of the restaurant managers had the climbing pipes removed. The pipe mazes were nearly phased out of the other restaurant chains, but eventually larger pipe pipes were built to prevent stuck teens, and better cleaning procedures were put into place. Proponents of Freddy's Fortress had pointed to the relative success of the other chains' newest pipe mazes to argue for the inclusion of the fortress in the pizzaplex. Opponents to Freddy's Fortress had argued that the massive size of the fortress maze would multiply safety and cleaning issues exponentially. The idea was nearly scrapped until the tech geniuses at Fazbear Entertainment came up with HAPS. They programmed HAPS to be so efficient and autonomous that no human employee ever had to go in the fortress. HAPS kept the entire network of pipes sparkling clean and hygienic and in good repair, and he made sure no big jerks got stuck. At the top of their climb, Jace paused to catch his breath. As, J as Jace wiped his face, Aiden waited patiently. The climbing holds in the tubes were placed close together, so even the smallest kids could use them, and the angles of ascent in the tubes weren't extreme. It wasn't hard to work your way up through the fortress. Jace, however, wasn't in the best shape. Given that his only physical activities were picking up a book or tinkering with the clocks he liked to collect, he got out of breath pretty easily. We have four choices here. Jay said finally. I don't see any sign of a slide. Aiden glanced down the lateral tunnels, extending out from their current location. Nope, no slides. To the left though, down one of the angled tunnels, Aiden could see three little kids. Aiden pointed. Let's go if we can s let 
Let's go see if we can scare some munchkins. Jace laughed. Good idea. He crawled into the tunnel Aiden had indicated. Aiden followed. The new tunnel twisted sharply three times before winding around to a pipe that intersected with the one the little kids were in. Jace paused at the entrance to the intersecting pipe. Assuming a soldier-like demeanour, Jace made a series of convoluted hand motions designed to mimic those he and Aiden had seen in action movies. First, Jace pointed at his eyes, then at Jaden, at Jaden's eyes. Jaden, that's their shipping name. Um, at Aiden's eyes, and then at the little kids, who were crawling happily, completely oblivious of their watchers. Jace made a circular gesture at the intersection pipe. Then he made a sort of crawling motion with his fingers. He used his other hand to make a larger crawling motion before dropping his second hand onto his first hand, apparently indicating a surprise ambush. Aiden laughed. Jace immediately put her finger to his hip to his lips and gave Aiden a mock stern a mock stern look. What is a mock stern look? Um Oh a mock stern look. Aiden stifled his laughter and pretended to zip his lips. Of course, all this pantomime was ridiculously unnecessary. Even if they'd laughed un uproariously and even yelled their lungs out, the little kids would have barely heard them. The pipes in Freddy's fortress were surprisingly well sound insulated. Aiden had read up on that too. Apparently the plastic used to form all the pipes in the maze wasn't ordinary plastic. Some kind of special polymer had been included in the mix to soundproof the tubes. They weren't completely soundproof, obviously, but they muted sound enough that between the plastic and the loud music and crowd noise filling the pizzaplex, sound didn't carry far in the maze. Jace made a with me motion, and he crawled into the intersecting pipe. Aiden followed. They crawled about 30 feet or so before Jace came to a stop and held a fist. Jaden grinned and obediently stopped too. Jace pointed to his right. They were close enough to the little kids now that they could hear them. There were three of them, two boys and a girl. The girl seemed to be the one in charge of the little group. She sounded really bossy. We need to go up here first, Bobby. This is the right way, she said in a norm, uh, in a mum-like tone. But I want to go down the slide. <laughs> oh no, why did I even choose to do these voices? Yeah, me too, the second boy said. You're both stupid, the bossy girl said. Jace looked over his shoulder at Aiden. He mimed sticking a finger down his throat. Aiden understood. Jace had a bossy older sister. He probably sympathised with Bobby and the other boy. Jace held up a finger, then two fingers. Aiden positioned himself to follow Jace's lead. Jace held up a third finger, then he pointed. Jace and Aiden let out blood-curdling screams and crawled furiously around the bend. They crowded in next to each other, with faces contorted into monster-like expressions they reached out as if to grab the little kids. All three kids, who looked to be maybe five or six, screamed. One of the boys, a small kid with straggly brown hair, screamed louder than the others. The other boy, round-faced and dark-skinned, didn't just scream, he turned to scurry away. The girl, a cute blonde with bright blue eyes, stopped screaming almost as quickly as she started. She instantly figured out that Aiden and Jace were messing with her and her friends. She had been startled into screaming but she wasn't scared of them. Sitting back on her heels, the girl put her hands on her hips, wearing red pants, a black shirt, and a red and black striped headband. The little girl looked like a pint-sized fierce warrior. All she needed was face paint to complete her look. Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> the girl glared at Aiden and Jace. You're mean, she said. Aiden lunged forward and roared at her. It was a good roar, but it didn't bother the girl at all. Instead of reacting to Aiden, she elbowed the boy next to her. He was still screaming, Shut up, Bobby. It's just a couple big stupid boys being jerks. Bobby, who had screwed up his eyes, his face bright red, opened his eyes. He stopped screaming. The girl turned and looked at the retreating boy. Get back here, Arlo. Stop being a scaredy cat. Aiden looked at Jace, who was staring at the girl with a wide-eyed frown. He looked like he couldn't decide whether to be surprised by the girl's nonchalance or annoyed by it. The girl turned back to Aiden and Jace. You're stupid, she announced. Stupid seemed to be her favourite word. Suddenly, Aiden felt pretty stupid. Why did he and Jace think it was so much fun to torment little kids? You're bullies too. 
the little girl said. She started crawling toward them. Now get out of the way, or I'll punch you. Aiden didn't doubt the girl would follow through with her threat. He nudged Jace, and the two teens turned to crawl away into the another pipe. <laughs> L plus ratio. <laughs> they weren't running away or anything, obviously. Who ran from a five-year-old? Aiden's ego wanted him to be clear on that as he and Jace crawled. So why did they retreat so quickly? Well, for sure it wasn't that Aiden was afraid of a five-year-old girl's punch. The real reason he wanted to get away from the girl as fast as possible was that he didn't think his ego could survive being bested by the munchkin he'd been trying to scare. Served them right, he figured. Scaring little kids wasn't exactly a nice thing to do. Yeah, that's right, the little girl called out behind them. Run away and don't come back. Aiden didn't bother responding to the little powerhouse. He was ashamed of himself. Apparently Jace wasn't feeling too good about himself either. He didn't say anything for several minutes as Aiden led him through a series of several twisting tubes. Finally, at the junction with three new pipe offshoots, Aiden stopped and looked back at Jace. Do you feel as big as a jerk as I do? He asked his friend. Jace dropped his head. Yeah. They sat in silence for a few seconds. Aiden gazed past Jace to watch little kids in other pipes. Then he craned his neck to look down onto the main walkway of the pizzaplex. He suddenly wished he and Jace were down there having fun, instead of being up here trying to take out their frustrations on poor little kids. Not that the little girl had fit that description at all. Jace nudged Aiden. Let's find a slide and then get out of here. Good idea. You lead. Jace nodded. He crawled into the nearest pipe opening. Aiden went in behind him. A few pe- eh. A few feet along the new pipe, Jace started to lead them past the pink offshoot tube to the right. Suddenly he gasped and faltered. What? Aiden asked. He squeezed up to his friend to look down at the pink tube. Jace laughed sheepishly. It's just Haps. He surprised me is all. Aiden didn't tease Jace for his reaction. Aiden could see how Haps had startled Jace. The robot was only a couple feet away, facing a green tube that led off from the pink tube. Haps' big foam hands were pressed against the heavy plastic on either side of the green tube's opening. Aiden could see that beyond the hole, the tube's green plastic was bulging abnormally. Apparently sensing Aiden and Jace watching him, Haps rotated his squarish head and smiled widely. Hey Haps, Jace said. Hello. Haps said in a chirpy tone. I didn't know what voice to give it. I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> Haps' voice was robotic and stiff, but it was pitched high and came out in a cheerful sing-song cadence. I'm Haps. Are you lost? From what Aiden and Jace had discovered in their previous encounters with Haps, this was Haps' go-to first line. No, we're fine, Haps, Aiden said. I am happy to hear that you are fine. Ha Haps re re uh, replied. Conversation wasn't Haps' forte. He was a pretty quiet robot. Besides his few simple phrases, the only sounds Haps emitted were the hums and whirs of his servos and the churning of the black rubber th treads that he used to get around. The treads took the place of legs and feet. In spite of Haps' stiff speech, he was likeable. The robot was clearly designed to make kids feel safe. About two and a half feet tall, Haps appeared to be made of a combination of plastic, metal, rubber, and foam. Haps' torso was shaped like an isosceles quadrandal. Oh my gosh! Damn it, I almost did that right. Haps' torso was shaped like an isosceles quadrangle. What is a quadrangle? I did math at uni. <laughs> I don't know what a quadrangle is. A fact Aiden was proud to know, he liked geometry, and it was made of grey metal. It might be like a... Is it, is it like a trapezoid? A, a trapezium? I don't know. And it was made of grey metal. Uh, a couple of small doors were inset in the torso. Aiden wasn't sure what they were for. Articulated metal arms, grey except for black and yellow security stripes painted on the biceps area extended from the quadrangle sides. The arms ended up in... Uh, sorry, the arms ended in big white foam hands. That looked like the weird number one foam hands that kids wore at football games. A round plastic head sat on the short edge of the quadrangle-shaped torso. 
The head was topped with a flashing yellow security light. Although Haps' big rubber treads and grey metal gave him a vaguely tank-like appearance, his face countered that with an industrial look. Featuring bright yellow eyes, round cheeks of more black and yellow striped paint, and a large tilted mouth full of backlit, grinning teeth, Haps had a friendly demeanour. As Aiden and Jace looked on, Haps lifted one of his big foam hands and gave the teens a thumbs up. Aiden and Jace returned the gesture. As soon as they did, Haps turned back to the opening of the green tube in front of them. Something clicked, and a swishing sound accompanied the sudden appearance of a mirror. The mirror slid into place like a spaceship door, blocking the green tube. As soon as the mirror partition settled, Haps turned and trundled on down the offshoot, away from Aiden and Jace. As he went, one of the little doors on Haps' torso opened, and a third arm unfolded from the opening. On a telescoping extender, the arm ended in a curved sponge that wiped the pipe's interior as Haps passed through it. The arm moved so fast it was hard to follow it. Not only was the arm sponging, it was also spraying the floral-smelling disinfectant that Haps used liberally. The sponging and spraying made Haps look like uh, a miniature mobile car wash. That was cool, Jace said. Aiden pushed, uh, pulled his gaze from Haps. He nodded and crawled past Jace into the pink tube. He poked at the mirror that had just appeared. There has to be some mechanism here. He ran his fingers along the edge of the mirror. Jace crawled up next to him, and he too prodded the edges of the mirror. I don't think Haps is a wizard, so yeah, you're right. The mirror didn't come out of nothing. The boys explored the edges of the mirror for another minute or so. They found nothing. Aiden plopped back on his butt, crossing his legs. I think I know why these mirrors show up. Why? Before this mirror blocked the opening, I saw what looked like a problem with the tube. I wonder if they used the mirrors as barriers to shut off parts of the maze that need maintenance. Kind of like emergency doors that close in on a submarine if it starts to take on water. Chase nodded. That makes more sense than using them to confuse us. And for sure they'd have a way of handling problems. They wouldn't want to have to shut down the whole fortress if there's an issue in one area. Aiden gave the mirror one last look, then nudged Jace. Come on, let's stop hassling little kids. Let's see if we can find Haps again. Maybe he'll lead us somewhere interesting. Aiden pointed down the pink tube.